welcome to a brand new episode of Step into the Future presented by GE and partnered by Times Network. The aviation sector accounts for approximately 2% of global carbon dioxide emissions. Given that the rise in temperature may result in a frequency that increases and intensity of extreme weather events, including cyclones, heavy rains, storm surges and heat waves, this is definitely a problem that needs a solution. With this backdrop today, I'm having a special discussion with some experts on the future of flight. Allow me to introduce my guests. I'm speaking today with Alok Nanda, CTO, GE, South Asia and CEO, GE, India Technology Center, Sanant Kaul, Chairman, International Foundation for Aviation, Aerospace and Drones, and Praveen PA, Director, Aerospace and Defense, Government of Telangana. Welcome to all of you. Now, Mr. Nanda, given sustainable aviation fuels are the next step in reducing carbon emissions in the environment, in terms of international collaborations and green initiatives, what efforts have GE undertaken in adopting sustainable aviation fuel and at the same time pushing forward the sustainable growth of the Indian aviation sector? We are committed at GE for decarbonizing flight and we believe that sustainable aviation fuel is a very important first step for carbon neutral fuel usage. So in that respect, what we did earlier this year, partnering with United Airlines, is to demonstrate 100% sustainable aviation fuel usage as a drop-in fuel con con uh, context for a flight. Now what it means is that engine is the same, aircraft is the same, airport infrastructure remains the same, we change the fuel and demonstrate flight. It is a very significant thing to do because it establishes that G is ready to use sustainable aviation fuels as they become more and more available. And this is a very important step uh, as we move towards decarbonization for the world and also for India. Let me come to you, Mr. Cole. So what is your take on urban air mobility or UAM and advanced air mobility, which is touted to be the next big disruptor in the aero industry in India? What is the potential for India to be a leader in designing and developing these systems for efficiency and air traffic control? Urban air mobility and advanced air mobility are new concepts getting involved mainly in the United States. But they are leading the world just now in in the concept alone just now. As far as India is concerned, we are way behind. We have not even integrated our unmanned air system, the drone system. Uh, only in 2021 did we really open up the drone uh, industry. I mean, for manufacture, for owning, for running, for operating. And in fact, for four or five years prior to that, we had actually blocked it. When a drone got introduced about 10 years back as civil uh, items, uh, there was a huge churn all over the world, but India chose to stop it, not to allow growth of drones. Whatever drones were available, like drones for marriage, uh, where photography was involved and all, were technically illegal after 2014. So then around two little couple of years later they opened up a little bit but a little bit with so many restrictions that it was really not a uh, really possible to have a good drone ecosystem something happened by 2021 suddenly the whole thing the floodgates opened and now the liberalization in drone ownership manufacture operation everything has been opened up uh, in a way which is very good which is very healthy and not only that i think some restrictions on 100 percent import of 100% uh, drones has also been restricted to allow local manufacturer drones to take place. Now, drone, man drone management is by itself a very major issue because it comes in conflict with air traffic management. Therefore, what they call the digital sky for uh, drones is a concept which is still in the making. It has not come up. There was a lot of issues uh, like uh, no uh, takeoff, no permission, no takeoff. NPNT, uh, which was introduced that drones will have to have carry a chip with it and only when it is, uh, when they will have to apply online, everything will be done digitally and they will be allowed to fly from A to B during a particular sort of time, say 9 to 4 p.m. and not otherwise. And thereafter drones, like we have done with, say, space. 
Now, space manufacturing and uh, work of ISRO is commendable. They've achieved a lot. They are also opening up now to private sector. But where are we in civil aviation? Well, we are there a little bit, little bit, little bit. But, you know, we have not really done well. In automobiles, we've done very well. So here is one sector which has lagged behind, in my view. And I think there is a need to have a greater study, greater research, greater thinking, greater rulemaking on all these subjects. And as far as advanced urban mobility is concerned, I think we have no concept, no idea, no thinking, not much on the subject. I've never heard of it. So it's basically a concept which is alien to India. It is being discussed in the Western countries. It is being discussed by Federal Aviation Authority of the United States and other countries, and it's going to take place. It, you can't hold back technology. It's going to take place. Whether we want to do it or not, or we want to lag behind or not, is another aspect. Mr. Praveen, what role is the state of Telangana playing in the exponential growth of the Indian aerospace sector? And how has it become the most preferred aerospace manufacturing destination in India? So, uh, since the last five, six years, uh, since the new government has taken over, I think aerospace and defense as a sector has been given a priority status in Telangana. So that means we have the right focus of the policy, in the infrastructure creation, in the uh, uh, the skill development as well as innovation, promotion of innovation, etc. On all count, all counts of uh, uh, the ecosystem building initiatives have been spearheaded by the state government. Historically, Telangana has been a, a defense hub. So we used to it's used to be Hyderabad used to be called the missile hub of India because of the DRDO labs and the, the dozen DPSUs which are present in Hyderabad. But over a period of, say, 30, 40 years, a large number of scientists who worked in this uh, defense establishment moved out and started on their own. And today we have a very vibrant cluster of more than 1,000 MSMEs, many of whom have kind of grown bigger and much larger size now, uh, who cater exclusively to defense and aerospace ecosystem. I mean, obviously it was originally defense, but in the last uh, uh, six, seven years, a large number of these companies have moved into the aerospace domain. Uh, Hyderabad also has been uh, the chosen hub for Tata's, the Tata group to kind of uh, have of their own facility as well as a joint ventures with Lockheed Martin, with Boeing, with G, etc. So today we have uh, the the marquee Make in India programs of these leading OEMs, including the Apache, the Chinook. Uh, we have the Boeing, uh, you know, producing the. Uh, I mean, yeah, these are the Boeing programs, and they also kind of now announced that the the vertical fins of the seven three seven triple seven series of aircraft will be built in Hyderabad. Similarly, Lockheed has got multiple programs. The latest one being the F sixteen wings. G is manufacturing the aero engine parts. Now, these are all the Tata's uh, joint ventures which came in. But what has interestingly been seen is now the OEMs were originally, uh, you know, dependent on Indian partners are now planning to come, come solo. Say, for example, Safran, which has got a, a large, uh, uh, of, I mean, quite a few uh, uh, years of experience working with uh, Indian uh, partners in, in, in Bangalore, for that matter. When they chose to go solo, they came to Hyderabad. In fact, uh, uh, we're just uh, shortly launching or rather inaugurating two of their facilities which has come up in Hyderabad. In fact, there the Safran has kind of come solo. So this uh, means the ecosystem has matured to give the global OEMs the confidence to kind of set up, uh, uh, you know, in India. And for the last six years, if I were to take it, the last three uh, wings event, the Ministry of Civil Aviation's flagship uh, air show, which happened, uh, Telangana was awarded the best state for the most uh, progressive outlook towards aerospace consecutively for the last three years. In fact, it was a biennial show, and if you put the cumulative period of six years, we've been number one in that uh, domain. And Telangana also, Hyderabad also featured in the global FT uh, awards uh, of aerospace uh, cities of future. Uh, it was ranked number one in cost effectiveness metrics uh, as, you know, as a global aerospace uh, location. So, and particularly after COVID, when almost all the world is looking at reducing the cost and so this particular uh, ecosystem is now ranked number one in cost effectiveness. It's again a great thing. Another thing which I would like to highlight is uh, we have one of the earliest uh, aerospace AC sets created in the country in Adubatla. 
but not just that we have multiple aerospace park we have two aerospace as he said one at ajipatla and second uh, which is run by the gmr next to the adjoining uh, gmr aerospace the international hyderabad national airport multiple hardware parks you've got the largest electronic manufacturing park which uh, has uh, uh, you know on the 916 uh, acres i believe uh, where a large number of avionics and defense electronics companies are setting up we have the country's first composite manufacturing park in composites become very important when it comes to sustainable aviation because uh, go I mean like increasingly the use of composites are much more which will reduce the cost of which will reduce the weight uh, of the aircraft which will also improve on the fuel efficiency we have got a large park uh, where large industries are coming and they are also uh, you know tying up with the OEMs to kind of really do uh, get into the supply chain uh, our policy has been very uh, well recognized the TSI pass where in all approvals are given by the government in a very in a 15 days time frame for mega projects uh, with our on a self certification basis i mean the companies doesn't have to go to any office they can start off their business based on uh, the self certification basis so uh, which has encouraged a lot of companies because there's hardly any red tape uh, which you see here because all mm -hmm. officers including the minister is accessible uh, to any of these companies and that way the approvals have been smooth the uh, the going has been good for all the companies who come in there detail on this what engine technology is GE offering to decarbonize the aviation industry and provide better thermal management while keeping the skies cleaner you know decarbonization is a journey and you know we believe that we need solutions for today and we need solutions for future as we move towards first reducing the carbon emission and then going towards our goal of uh, zero carbon emission so in that respect, I talked about sustainable aviation fuel. What we've also done for today is introduced engines which have 10 to 15 percent higher efficiency engines like LEAP and soon to introduce G9X. What we are doing for future is, uh, is through our RISE platform, which we announced uh, with our partner Safran under our CFM uh, joint venture. RISE means revolutionary innovation for sustainable engines. And this is a platform that uh, intends to reduce carbon emissions substantially and also be 100% hydrogen capable. We are also trying out technologies which enable us to get a hybrid electric flight through demonstrators working with other partners like, like NASA where we would have a megawatt worth uh, generator, motor, electric uh, propulsor, along with uh, a smaller gas turbine uh, to power flight. Now, all these technologies, either on their own and together, will be very significant as we uh, aim to reduce carbon emission. And these will happen through th to, to a few things that I would, I would share as examples. One of them is open fan rotor. You know, as you enter the plane and you look towards the engine, what you see is a fan. Now, this fan has a duct covering it in, in most aircraft engines. Now, as air flows, as the fan sucks in the air, the air flows through this duct, and there is a drag because it, it, it flows inside the duct. Now, if you remove the duct, now you can get higher propulsive efficiency, and that's what we are targeting to do and we've been working on this technology for two decades now and we are uh, we believe we are ready to introduce it through our rice platform so that is one example of the technology which gives, gives us better propulsive efficiency now we also have several technologies that we've introduced in, uh, in in our current engines and we want to introduce continue to uh, to work upon some of them like uh, better materials like uh, ceramic metric comp composites, which can work at much higher temperatures than, than metals, and also are much more lighter. 
then we have technologies like uh, composites, flan, fan blades, which we've, we've, we've used in our engines before. And very, very uh, proud to say that some of the technologies that we've proven in our military applications, like adaptive uh, thermodynamic cycle, what we've learned there, we are also working to introduce that in our commercial uh, applications. And all these technologies, we, we believe, either together or on their own independently, lead us to a more decarbonized flight. What kind of joint collaboration or effort have you witnessed between IT and ITES talent pools, state industrial policy and aerospace aviation institutions in the last five years? What does that mean for India in terms of leadership in innovation and development of technology while competing in the global aviation market? Under the uh, uh, guidance of our Honorable IT Minister, uh, Mr. K.T. Ramarao, who had a very concerted view on how to grow this industry. In fact, Telangana has been, you know, historically known as an IT hub, second only to Bangalore at that point in time. But in the last seven, eight years, which you have seen, the kind of investments which has come in and the institutions which we have created within the state is phenomenal in terms of We've been, in fact, uh, just two days back, we inaugurated the T-Hub Phase 2, the largest software incubator uh, in the country. And, uh, you know, similarly, so incubation is not just software, so we have the largest hardware incubator called T-Works coming in, it's just for uh, ready for inauguration now. Another institution which we created was Rich, which is uh, a lot of IP, which is there in the academic institution, the search centers really are lying idle. So we are trying to commercialize them. We are, we are bringing interface between industry and the these academic and other institutions to see how we can kind of create more value out of the IP originally existing there. So that institution is looking at that. TSIC is Telangana State Innovation Forum. In fact, uh, Council is one entity which is trying to network and bring together the 50 odd accelerators and incubators already present so that they can all can work together and uh, you know try to enlarge the innovation ecosystem around it and when it comes to aviation uh, you know we try to build in all our strengths together in fact uh, boeing has run two acceleration programs here the boeing horizon x as well as the boeing build program where sustainable aviation was one theme in fact we are trying to encourage uh, these problem statement, we're giving this problem statement to the local uh, startups, local, I mean, basically it's our uh, much more wider program, much beyond Hyderabad, it's a national program. So we encourage all these startups to come together and uh, think through solutions. And many of them are now being accepted and uh, brought over, uh, you know, working on very cutting edge technologies in this space. So we also have another entity called Task, which is actually in the skilling. So it's not like, Innovation doesn't come in like that. So there are certain technologies which are new. So how will we train? So we work with the OEMs and create training modules for the local youth to be trained in, so that then they plan to kind of really outsource these jobs to, to India, probably to our location. There's a already a trained manpower pool who can kind of really take on this and then work from. So that is one reason why Telangana has been uh, one of the most favored or rather most preferred choices for the global OEMs and the supply chain partners abroad when they plan to come in here. Obviously, the, the local industry certainly develops from the cascading effects and the orders and the, the kind of opportunity which come along. Mr. Nanda, on uh, an allied note, uh, could you also help us understand how GE will help to upskill the aviation ecosystem in India? Yeah, we've done a lot working both with uh, government and academia in, in this regard and created an ecosystem which I think is, is is at par with any aviation ecosystem anywhere in the world. And I'll give you a few examples, starting with what we've done internally with GE. Now, you know, at John F. L. Technology Center, uh, we have a large base of aviation engineers who've contributed significantly to develop the biggest aircraft engine ever developed by anyone in the world, which is GE9X. A large part of that team was in India. We have a multimodal factory in Pune where we make air, aircraft engine parts. We've partnered with Tata's in Hyderabad to create, to manufacture components for our latest offering, uh, Leap Engine. We've created um, an additive manufacturing center of excellence, working with Tamil Nadu government, with their TIDCO uh, arm in Chennai. 
we are also working with iit chennai and several other uh, academic institutions in india partnering with uh, government schemes like uchitar avishkar yojana or imprint where we we've, we've taken the technology forward and also developed talent in india we worked with several of the government uh, labs as an example the national aerospace laboratories in bangalore to actually uh, take technology forward a very important example of that is a micro turbine that we've developed along with iit chennai completely designed developed manufactured in india which is now getting tested uh, at national aerospace laboratories in 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 uh, in bangalore so you you see with all these programs we are getting the best technology we are getting the best opportunities challenges to india and using and creating an ecosystem and using the talent which is abundantly available in india to create an ecosystem which is at par with the best in the world well that was indeed a very insightful take on how sustainable aviation fuels have risen up to be the ultimate solution for making the skies greener thank you for joining us on this episode of step into the future presented by ge and partnered by times network don't forget to join us for the next episode till then this is tamanna nandar signing off